So as far as, you know, once you're negotiating the price, as I mentioned, you know, last, last video, a bunch of stuff with food and the appetizers, the other big thing of how to get your price down is the alcohol. So some people, you know, I mean, I've, I've seen it many times. I've never been to a wedding, but I've, I've seen it many times where people have a dry wedding. If you have a dry wedding, you are going to get a very good deal. Alcohol is a big part of the cost of, um, of a wedding. And if you're going to have an open bar, you have to expect to spend a pretty good amount of money on that. Um, I had an open bar, but again, it was included in my price. And the deal that Rudy and I got was a little bit unrealistic for most places because, like I said in two videos ago, um, it was a new venue that was looking for weddings. So essentially we were in some way doing them a favor because, you know, they wanted weddings, they want people in their venue, they're trying to get publicity and they're trying to get, you know, their name out. So that's why we got a good deal. Um, so for the alcohol, the most extreme thing you can do, obviously, like I said, is have no alcohol. The second most extreme thing you can do is you can do something called having a signature drink. Now, this this works for some people, it doesn't work for other people, is you, well, maybe this isn't the second most, kind of in line is you can kind of do one thing or the other. You can do just beer and wine, which is going to be a, a much lower price point, or like I just said, you can do signature drinks, one or two. And you can kind of combine those, like you could have just beer and wine, the end. You could have just signature drinks, the end. Or you could have signature, two signature drinks, one signature drink, and beer and wine. All of these things are going to get you at lower price points. Cheapest being no alcohol. I think I would say the second cheapest would probably be one or two signature drinks. The third cheapest would probably be just beer and wine. The fourth cheapest would be just beer and wine and then one or two signature drinks. Now again to explain a signature drink, what you basically do is you pick your favorite mixed drink. Um, I don't know, so like let's say you take like um, a Malibu Bay Breeze, which I get a lot, I don't really drink that much, but when I do I like Malibu Bay Breeze. So you take like the color of it, so like a Malibu Bay Breeze is usually kind of like yellow and pink-ish sometimes, I don't know. Um, so you look at that and then you see how that color can apply to your wedding and you make up a stupid funky name for it. <laughs> and uh, you know, you could call it like Chloe and Rudy's Fun Time Surprise or uh, you know, the 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 the, the 10 ter 10 10-13 sizzler swizzle sizzler drink, <laughs> you know? Like you can make up whatever the hell you want to call it. Like you just you take a mixed drink and then you name it. <laughs> and like you name it whatever you want to name it. <laughs> So then you have people go up there and like, you know, it'd be nice to like make a little sign that says Chloe and Rudy's Swizzler Surprise is made up of pineapple juice and vodka and, you know, and Malibu Bay rum. Like, you know, like it'd be nice to like have the ingredients listed for people if you can, like that would be nice. But, you know, it's just, it's just a fun thing to still have alcohol, but it's cheaper because you're only, if you only have... You know, if rum and coke is your signature drink, you only need rum. You know, you don't need to have, you know, a bunch of different alcohol. You only need, the bar only needs to have rum for you. They only need to buy, you know, four bottles of rum. They don't need to buy three bottles of rum, three bottles of vodka, three bottles of this, three bottles of that. So that's how it ends up being cheaper, is having signature drinks, you know. Two is pretty safe. I, I would try to do two. If you can, if you're doing that, because then at least you have two options, and I try to make them as different as possible. I would have a Malibu Bay Breeze and then like a White Russian. Like I would try to have something that like you know two different people would like, because um, then at least it gets a little bit easier. And it's I mean like I feel like a Malibu Bay Breeze. I mean I don't know. I don't really drink that much. Like I said, <laughs> I feel like anybody could drink that, but you know I don't know. I'm a girl. I know like sometimes men are like hey drink something like that. It's too fruity anyway. But whatever. So if that doesn't work for you. You say, I, I don't care. I'm a big drinker. I want to have a full bar. You know, I, I don't want that. that. That doesn't work for me. My wedding, I want to have a full bar. So you can, you still have an option here. You still have a couple other options here. Is if you still want to have an open bar, but you cannot afford top shelf liquor, you can get a bar of bottom shelf liquor. And that's again going to knock you down in price point. Instead of getting, you know, I have no idea. I have no idea what I'm talking about here, so I'm just saying things out of my ass, but instead of getting like a, 
you know, uh, an absolute bottle of vodka, you're gonna get, like, the Majorska vodka, <laughs> like, you know, I mean, nobody's gonna see the bottle, nobody's gonna know what they're getting, and, you know, there people are there to get drunk, they're gonna get drunk, and they probably don't really care what it is, and if it matters to you to have those options, then going with bottom shelf liquor might just be what you have to do, and that's what's gonna get you the options, but the lower price point. Um, now, having an open bar, let's say you're like, no, I don't like that. I'm a big drinker. I want my I want my top shelf stuff. It doesn't work for me. I gotta cut this down some other way. The other thing you can do, well, there's two other things you can do. Obviously, you can have a cash bar. You can have a full bar, everything you want, but people have to pay for their drinks. People are gonna be mad at you, and they're gonna be like, why do you have this cash bar? Because people are like, I don't. I want to come to a wedding to enjoy myself, not to pay like I'm going to the bar. People do not like cash bars. But, in some situations, that's what you have to do. And again, you can reference back to the beer and wine. If you're just paying for beer and wine, you can have an open bar with the other alcohol being a cash bar. You can have beer and wine open bar, the rest of the alcohol on a cash bar. That's what you need to do, that's what you need to do. There's many combinations of this that you can make work to still have everything you want. Um, if you can avoid it, don't have a full cash bar, but if that's what you have to ha do, that's what you have to do, you know, you still want to have a nice wedding and you don't want to not have a nice wedding by your standards because of the alcohol, you know, you don't want to be like, well, I want to have an open bar, so I have to have an open bar at this shitty place because I want the open bar, so, you know, try to do what you can do and, uh, you know, weigh your options, it's important to have, you know, like a, a, a list of priorities, it'd be good if you made one and the person you're marrying made one, then you can kind of see, you know, like, let's, okay, for me and Marie, my number one thing was photography. I had to have the best photographer. Rudy's number one thing was the best food. He had to try the food and he had to have food that he liked. So, you know, that we had to balance that. Rudy was okay with me getting the photographer, whatever photographer I wanted, and, you know, him and I kind of negotiated the food, but more than anything, I just kind of kept him in line with, like, Rudy, this is all we can afford, you know? You have to understand that this is all we can afford. So, you know, yeah, it's just important to kind of make sure that you, both you and the person that you're marrying, kind of get get some degree of what you want. Um, the list is very important. Doing the list, it will help you a lot. Um, or at least just having a conversation about, hey, this is what's most important to me. This is what's most important to me. Let's do everything we can do to make those two things our two priorities. And, um, you know, work down from there. Then, you know, your, each of your second priorities, hopefully there's some kind of a crossover there. Hopefully some of your priorities are relatively, you know, equal. Um, you know, just do the best you can in figuring out what really matters. And that's what's, you know, really important is, you know, at the end of the day, you're going to get married no matter what. And that should really be, the, you know, the most, it's, I, I guarantee if you made a list that wouldn't be the number one most important thing. But really, that's the most important thing. At the end of the day, this is the day that you're getting married and and that's what's important. And some people will say to you, the ceremony is the most important part to me, and that's great. And um, if that's the most important part to you and your fiancé does not agree with that, then that's great because then, you know, you get what you want and then they would get what they want. Just know, you know, I mean, most of the things you should be able to both get relatively what you want. Um, I think that, that kind of covers, covers mostly everything. Um, what other little money-saving tips can I throw in here? Um, flowers are expensive. If you want to have flowers, you're going to pay a lot of money for them. Um, I made my own bouquets for myself and my bridesmaids, and I also made my centerpieces. If you have a creative idea and you're a creative, crafty person and you can do that and make your own stuff, um, or if you're okay with it, buying fake flowers and just kind of fancying them up a little bit, that's a good way to save a lot of money. It will help you. Um, you know, even like stuff like the dollar store, like, you know, don't underestimate like stuff like the dollar store or like places like Five Below and and you just general like discount stores like that, you know, look on the clearance. Um, uh, Home Goods is a really good place to look to help you with venues, um, with venues, with, with um, like vases or centerpieces. Um, and even if you go there and they have five of something, there are other home goods. I mean, I live in a pretty easy area where I can drive to multiple different home goods. I mean, I think I ended up going to two, because um, I was able to get some at TJ Maxx, some of the apothecary jars, TJ Maxx home goods, and then again, and then I went to a different home goods, 
And uh, I also went multiple times. I started, you know, planning ahead is very important also because then you have more time to collect what you need to collect. Um, there's a really great website called Save on Crafts and they have apothecary jars too, which is what I wanted. I'm not saying you have to, you have, to have it all. Um, I, I bought, I think, two from there at the end only because they had a style that I had not seen anywhere. So I ended up buying like two and I purposely wanted mismatched apothecary jars. So I think I ended up with like two or three of every style. I, I, I think I had like 14 tables or 15 tables at the end. Um, and also like, you know, something you need to do before you really do anything, like I said, you have to get your budget in line, but you also have to have like a tentative guest list in line because you really can't figure anything out until you have an idea of how many people you're going to want to invite. You know, you might figure this all out and be like, oh, I'm only going to invite 100 people, and then you go do it, and like, you when you do your list, you get your list from each of your parents, and uh, you're at 200 people all of a sudden, and you're like, oh shit, I can't afford 200 people at this place now, because instead of $100 a person times 100 people, we're at $100 a person times 200 people, so what I was expecting to spend is now doubled. Um, so I, I'd say the first thing is you should just do, guest list in line, budget in line, priorities in line, and then work from there. And it's important to, you know, weigh all of those things and use all of them to help you, you know, keep your budget in line, keep your budget in your budget, <laughs> and um, just to see what works for you. Um, and you know, if you have to get married at a place, if you have to get married outside, if you have to have a tent wedding, or if you have to have you know, your wedding at a place like an Elks Club. We almost got married at the Elks Club. We we were like, you know what? Maybe we don't want to do all this. Maybe we should just get married at the Elks Club. And you know, we even like, I think we actually even booked it. And uh, and then we just didn't end up, we ended up, you know, like, no, this isn't gonna work, sorry. And uh, you know, there's a lot of ideas. There's a lot of ways to have a nice wedding without having you know, an expensive wedding. You know, the average wedding these days is about $30,000, and if you don't have $30,000, you can still have a nice wedding. And, um, and don't forget that. And just, you know, at the end of the day, you're getting married, and getting married is, you know, the most important part of it. And as long as you have a nice ceremony and you're married at the end of the day, you know, your wedding was a success. So I guess that's the end of my little wedding series, and I, I hope this helps somebody. And if you have any questions, please ask me. I, I know so much about this at this point, so... I would love to help anybody I can. And thank you for watching. I don't know why I just like winked at you like a weirdo.